There's a number of different ways of increasing your shooting performance other than actually shooting a gun. I'd like to talk to you about one of them today. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Tennis balls can be a great way of increasing your shooting performance on two fronts. Shooting is about eye-hand coordination and it's about hand strength. And tennis balls can help you with both of those things. And the nice thing about these is you can do this where you can't shoot. So you can do these drills in your home, you can do them in your car while you're stuck in traffic. And so you can be working on your shooting skills even though you're not at the range. And it doesn't cost anything, you're not burning any ammo, which is hard to find and expensive these days. So let's look at what that involves. First off, in hand strength, we can just use these to squeeze them and build up our hand strength. Now, if you squeeze these, you can feel, you know, you're working your finger muscles and you're working the wrist muscles, and those are exactly the same muscles that will be used to hold the pistol, which will help you deal with recoil and for pulling the trigger. Now, be careful when you're doing this that you're not teaching yourself the wrong thing. Because when we're shooting, the trigger finger should be isolated from the gripping fingers. One of the problems we'll have when we're shooting is one of the things called milking, where while you press the trigger, you're actually clenching your fist. So while the trigger finger pulls the trigger, you're actually tightening the grip. And that will generally result in your shots going low. That's milking. So when you're doing this training, think about isolating the trigger finger from the rest of the hand, the gripping fingers. So when you're doing the gripping exercises, keep your trigger finger straight and work on pressing the ball. And you'll notice that I'm having trouble if I really exert pressure on the tennis ball, you'll see the index finger wants to move. Really work on keeping it straight so it's isolated. And then conversely, we can work just the trigger finger, keep the gripping finger straight, and just work on pressing against the ball like you're pressing on a trigger. Now I'm pushing on the ball a lot harder than I'd press on any trigger, and you're thinking, well, I don't need to do that. I'm only pressing on a five pound trigger or a three pound trigger, whatever it may be. The thing is, the stronger this trigger finger is, the more control it'll have, allowing you to really precisely control the trigger when you're operating. So this can work on grip strength. Just remember, keep the trigger finger isolated from the gripping fingers. So if you're doing gripping exercises, keep the trigger finger straight. If you're doing trigger finger exercises, keep the gripping fingers straight. The other way this can be useful is, is hand-eye coordination. So just simply bouncing the ball and catching it will go a long ways towards working your hand-eye coordination. Now, you know, it seems kind of simplistic, but I'll tell you, working with the ball and working with different hands, working on different ways of catching it, whether it's this way or cupping it, um, tossing it between your hands without looking at the ball, really learning where your body is, goes a long ways towards increasing your hand-eye coordination. And shooting is all about hand-eye coordination, especially when we get into um, like uh, or, um, action type shooting, where we're talking about IPSC or IDPA, or actually training for gunfighting. That's where good hand-eye coordination is really going to come in. Now, we can bump this up a little bit by using a magic marker and actually writing numbers on the ball, or you could write letters for that matter, and make them about an inch and a half to two inches tall. I stole this idea out of um, a book called Sports Vision which is expensive but well worth the money and it talks about 
increasing your hand-eye coordination and visual performance. So I've got a number of numbers on this ball, and what that does is it really fo forces me to focus on the ball. You remember that old saying when you were a kid and you were, you know, um, trying out for Little League, and it was, uh, keep your eye on the ball. And how do you really do that? Well, having these numbers on here really forces you if you're looking for them. So when you're, when you're playing with this, whether it's you're playing catch with somebody else or just with yourself, look for the numbers and count, call them out as you see them. So number one, number two, number six, number two, number four and six, number four, number seven. So I'm looking at the ball closely enough that I can see the numbers. Once you're doing that, now be careful with spin. At first, don't have any spin on it because otherwise you'll never see the numbers. Once you get adept at being able to see the numbers and call them out, then apply a little bit of, stre uh, a little bit of spin to make it a little bit more difficult. Four, seven, two. All right, so these two um, exercises can be done with the tennis ball. So we can work the muscles of the hand and we can work the hand-eye coordination just by playing catch. Put in the time and you'll be amazed at how much it improves your shooting performance. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.